Hey everyone. What's going on guys, unofficial MCU here, hope you all doing well, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Moon Knight Episode 2 with all of the full-on review breakdown, as well of course as our theories and speculations towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for those as well. There's some very important key details as well closer towards the end of the episode of, for Episode 2 of Moon Knight, of course, so make sure you guys are staying tuned for all of that there as well. Of course, today's video we're going to be reading it from IGN.com article, of course, link down in the description down below for that full article recapping the overall episode here. I was as well as pretty much everything that you may or may have not missed throughout this pretty jam-packed and exciting episode of Moon Knight. I cannot wait for episode 3 and of course we're going to be breaking down Moon Knight episode 3 here on the channel so you might as well hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when that video does come out. So without further ado, we'll hop right on into it with the article. The second episode of Moon Knight fully introduced May Callum away's Layla, sprinkled in some important intel, raised the stakes somewhat and gave us a fresh pressed look at the story take on Mr. Knight. The three pieced a suit variant of the fist of Kanshu, Oscar Isaac continued to dazzle as a brought to the brink, Stephen, who found himself more at the war with his Mark personality than ever in this episode, while Ethan Hawke delivered more of his softer uh, sinister Arthur Howell, of course, including a better idea of his overall villainous plan that we're going to see unwrap here throughout this overall series here on Disney Plus, and even potentially in the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Something we do know about Moon Knight and his overall character, especially with Oscar Isaac here for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is that he's already been confirmed from writers and directors, producers, cast and crew, people that have, of course, worked on the Disney Plus show here, that Moon Knight is being said to be kept in the MCU for the next 10 plus years. So his overall really going to have quite a story to tell here throughout these next 10 years and I just cannot wait for it. I'm really looking forward to it. The show is still gifting us with a pronounced scenes between the two of these two different I guess characters here of Arthur Harrow and of course Oscar Isaac Stephen slash Mark Spector but it is also here in the second episode that Stephen bewilderment element started to wear thin. Stephen Grant's confusion living half a life while also unknowingly serving as a vessel for an Egyptian god the moon god Kanchu helped last week's premiere episode cr crackle with slapstick mystery of course now at the puzzled piece begins to fall into place more of his uttered deliriums feeling like an anchor holding this show back granted Stephen Grant at that we still aren't being given the entire mosaic since Mark Spector's character never feels like a clearly explaining everything to Stephen and is even fully explained to the audience themselves but questions are building up at an alarming rate and episode 2 only let a little air out of the balloon and answering wise, even at a only six episodes, a show can dwaddle when it could very well dash and should dash at that, says the article. Of course, there's plenty and tons of mystery as well that's going on throughout this overall show. A lot of that was being held within episode one, and it kept me at the edge of my seat, I have to be completely honest with you. And of course, as I had already talked about episode one in our episode one breakdown here on the channel, I am in, I'm absolutely in love with this overall show already, and we're only two episodes in here, so I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of it. Keeps you at the edge of your seat with plenty of mystery going on here. It reminds me quite a bit of WandaVision, kind of as we're experiencing the mystery unfold here through the eyes of the character. We don't really ever have a full understanding of exactly what's going on. Now, the overall article here, IGN's article, continues on. Okay, here's what we know. Mark Spector serves as an avatar for Kanshu, a dying tea that served Mark's life out of an e Egyptian desert. Mark doesn't like this role, at least he doesn't recently at least, and Kanshu's a massive jerk to him. Hero Kanshu whose former Mark even says as much, or rather than that, his former avatar, as the article does say. And now his eyes are tur turned to Layla into his next vengeance-dealing servant and to kind of essentially possess Layla. This here is Mark Spector's wife, of course, and he's trying to keep um, Kanshu, the moon god, away from him. So he's kind of, uh, kind of not very nice, I'd assume. I mean, he's nice in the sense that he's, I guess, preventing some evil events going on here, but it's not very nice to possess, uh, I guess, people here in that sense and use their bodies for such a sense here. Reminds me quite a bit as WandaVision, as I had just mentioned, with kind of taking over an entire town, like Wanda did in WandaVision. In this sense, Kanchu was taking over people and their bodies and their, I guess, overall
for our lives here in an effort to, I guess, do some good from it, which is something that's kind of yet to be explained here throughout the rest of the episodes. Continuing on here with IGN's article, so the two heroic goals here are uh, to stop Harrow from unleashing Amit and her Lethal Pre-Crime Wrath on the world and to protect Layla from Kanshu is the second, of course, goal here overall throughout the, I guess, Moon Knight show here, of course. And two things going on here at once. You kind of have like two different villains going on, which is another, I guess, fourth thing to add onto the list that Marvel has never done with this Moon Knight show. As I had already mentioned in our episode one breakdown, three of those key things that Moon Knight is bringing new to the table with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and not necessarily using that quote unquote formula that every other Marvel movie or show uses here necessarily is for one thing, we're using an A-list actor, so to speak. Oscar Isaac is well known from the Star Wars franchise. It's something that the Marvel Cinematic Universe rarely does is cast uh, actors that are kind of already well known out there of course a second thing of course would be the factor and the idea of using more violent tones and themes here and adding those into the marvel cinematic universe of course is something we've only had a little bit of glissom in i feel like in the first episode there but hopefully it will kind of continue on to unfold here with future episodes of the moon knight series here and of course the third thing would be the fact that we are kind of learning this character through a show instead of a movie we've never had a new marvel character or main character at that i should actually say to clear things up here that's introduced through their own tv show instead of their own movie so it's kind of difficult and hard to think of other marvel movies or shows out there where we're having multiple villains causing quite some trouble and in my own thoughts and opinions a little bit of a theory to kind of throw out there prematurely of course would be that potentially arthur harrow could evidently maybe be a good guy and actually teaming up here with moon knight however time will tell it's probably something i'm going to dive deeper into into of course a separate video in the future so hit that subscribe button and the notification button to be notified when that video does come out. So continuing on here with IGN's article here, ultimately Amit and Hero aside and the true adversary here, Moon Knight, Kanchu's avatar itself, if so, and let's say the Hero stuff is sort of get sorted out in the next episode or two leaving us with a different end game here or overall goal here for the show is saying that Amit and I guess Arthur Harrow isn't really necessarily all that much of a bad guy as I had mentioned maybe they could evidently team up and be good guys or maybe just kind of a side journey the article continues if so and this this is the case and this might be the first problematic superpower in the MCU since the Hulk and that's not completely true since we have Venom as well and it's something I had also discussed in our episode one breakdown as well meaning that the superhero who is causing an alter ego nothing but grief and terminal of course or turmoil it may be good in a fight but a living hell to endure otherwise of course anyone who gets powers developed by a more complicated life obviously the moon knight of course seems to be doing no one any good at that heck even the main villain so far is a former moon knight and he might have been doing more good at that arthur harrow and yes you do have to wonder about who these gods really are and are they actually Actually gods or could they very well be aliens something that's kind of questioned from the Eternals movie the article goes on and continues to say this among other things makes Moon Knight of the series feel even more disconnected from the MCU it's easily enough not to mention any Avengers or the blip but to also fly in the face of everything Thor has taught us with Asgard or even what Eternals just told or told us about the myths and gods in various ancient cultures seems like a lot now how Emmett and Kanchu possible or how are these godly beings actually a thing that's taking place here in the MCU and at that also in real world religions and cultures as well. Granted, this was never quite an issue in the comics, so maybe that's a mental route to take here as well, is kind of seeing how this show is disconnecting itself not only from the MCU itself, but also maybe potentially comics as well, which is something as well. The article goes on to continue, The Man in the Moon. By the end of episode two, Mark's the Mercs in control, but he also tells Steve even that once he's done with the mission, he's more happy than ever to just, of course, go and vanish and get out of his life and kind of give Stephen Grant, I guess, maybe back his body in a sense, but it is also kind of raising other questions of whether or not Mark Spector is the original personality, which he really is in the comics, of course. I mean, can Mark even do that? We assume he's the dominant personality, right? Because he is in the comics. One would have to be in order to actually become a mercenary and get married and do fully rounded life things, unlike Stephen Grant necessarily was really able 
able ever to get his life together in the first place because he was never actually fully in a complete control for enough a time of a period of time at that. Of course, the article mentions Mark could just be lying in order to get the job done here for Kanchi, but that is quite the lengths and the effort to go through in order to lie to Stephen Grant. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, he's not the brightest and he's not the smartest, and I guess Mark Spector kind of took care of him. It's a weird, unlogical sense to kind of think of it, but I guess maybe soak it up a little bit. Mark could just be lying in order to get the job done, as the article mentions, but that doesn't change the fact that we still don't know much about the Stephen slash Mark situation, except that Stephen was part of the package, so much so that Mark would previously assured Kanchu that Stephen wouldn't get in the way. A few huge questions that we're honestly overall left with and at that overwhelmed with by the end of episode 1 and episode 2 especially and stuff I'm probably going to go ahead and of course look into a little bit deeper and further for you guys to cover here on the channel so just all the more reason to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as the article of course IGN full article link down in the description down below lists uh, how did Mark and Steven normally switch places before this at the end of this episode we saw Steven experience this for the first time in his mind prison of course it's sort of a mention this week that what's happening now is unprecedented and for on a DID scale but how much of this setup was actually an accident or maybe actually on purpose meaning was Mark and Steven two separate beings at that and maybe one Kanchu possessed Mark Spector's body or maybe Stephen Grant we're not completely sure where it's taking place here in the Marvel Cinematic Universe although I would like to believe that Mark Spector is the one that is the rightful owner to the body could this very well have mushed up and mashed up two different people or could this have been maybe something caused by something else and kind of like an outside source something that's completely different and unrelated to Kanchu the moon god of course and another question here to of course ponder and wander here for the next couple I guess week here until we get to episode three which is probably more or less going to leave us with more questions than I actually did answer it would appear Mark purposely chose out to hide and said inside of Steven that they're allowing the theory above or that I had just previously mentioned to actually remain correct here he set himself up with a whole partial life buying him a new goldfish when needed always making sure he made it back to his bed and ankle strap and asking out co-workers on steven's behalf which is still odd given that mark is married and it would undoubtedly lead towards an awkward moment for steven of course how much of life has steven really had who's his mother layla mentions mark being on outs with his mom but in steven's leaving messages for the same mom or is it maybe something else and i did have a little bit of a theory about that from the first episode was steven grant really leaving messages for his mom or maybe someone random and completely unknown maybe those messages were going for or towards Layla we just don't completely know or understand here or where those messages were necessarily going and the final question here that IGN's article goes ahead and of course mentions here for us that we're probably already all asking and wondering how much of Steven's life is actually created original Moon Knight character Crowley appears on this show as a living statue whom Steven co confines in that there being the golden statue that we actually saw moving a little bit in episode two which was pretty freaky i'm not gonna lie to you and it's probably something i'm going to cover in a future separate video here on the channel something i didn't completely mention in our first episode breakdown but that's actually the statue the golden statue is actually supposed to be a reference towards one of the comic writers uh at that crowley who has appeared as the living statue whom stephen confines in as the article mentions is this just an easter egg or is this guy a hired actor for stephen's benefit that mark might have actually put there stephen yells at mark in this episode for eating away at parts of his life preventing him from thriving but Steven also acts like assimilation at that he'll go right back to work slapping prices and tags on a gift shop toys after being in a crazy car chase and a gun battle as we had already seen in episode one and also knowing that occult members work at his museum as well he just kind of continues to go on with the flow here and doesn't really ask any other further questions aside from then kind of just noticing these things and continuing on with his day-to-day -day life he doesn't really ever seem to make a full effort to get the answers to these questions making it seem like that he's not even a real person at that so I'll also go back into work in the morning after being chased by a jackal monster i mean i don't really blame the guy i would want money too but if i was chased by that thing i don't think i'm going back of course as we had saw in second episode here of moon knights steven and mark continue their tug of war this week though it wasn't until the end of the episode that things got resolved well kind of to an extent a lot of fun it was had with these reflections here as well as it was the way mark could speak to steven and it's kind of a freaky thing. although as the article goes on to continue this is the way that mark was able to cry and convince steven to get him to sleep 
and a storage locker so Mark could take over, which was funny, but maybe if I set him up with a comfy cot at that. But the show easily reached its limit with a confused protagonist. Isaac, Oscar Isaac at that, is making a fine meal of this dynamic, but story-wise, there's really no more room for a main character who barely knows what's going on or what's exactly happening. So, of course, undoubtedly, I think I speak for all of us, we're all very, very excited to go on and continue on with the rest of this mystery of this overall show here, as it's really unfolding here and it's really ramping up and getting started here, I feel like. On top of all the other questions that not only this article presents here, but also the overall show itself, there's one more thing that we're actually missing here and something that we just haven't seen yet, of course, that we actually see in the comics and that there is one more personality that hasn't stepped in or to say anything of course the first one well in the comics at least is supposed to be a billionaire a billionaire businessman Stephen Grant but in the show he's working at a gift shop of course a taxi cab driver who is Jake Lockley we haven't heard of him yet and of course there's also Mark Spector Jake Lockley we haven't heard anything really about all that much so it's very very curious I guess to see where when and how he's going to be showing up in this show and within the rest of the Marvel cinematic universe which i think i speak for all of you we cannot wait for of course i'm going to be continue to be covering not only just the moon knight episode breakdowns or reviews thoughts theories and speculations for its future and continuing episodes here on the channel but i'm also going to go ahead and continue to break down more and more of the episodes here because there's lots of different things to talk about here going on and forth here with the moon knight show and not only for the moon knight itself but there's a whole other marvel cinematic universe out there that this show isn't even completely connected to yet so it's also very interesting to see how, when, where, and I guess why it's going to be playing into the Avengers and all of that also going around. Of course, we're going to be covering all types of Marvel news, leaks, rumors, theories, breakdowns, and all of that, of course, here on the channel. So if you guys are interested into any of that, well, congratulations, you have found the correct place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification button notified when new videos do come out. Of course, I want to know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. I'd absolutely love to hear what you guys all think in the comments down below. Some of your thoughts and theories here for Moon Knight and it's continuing in future episodes. I I'd absolutely would love to hear. Drop a like in the video if you did enjoy it and check out our Instagram and official MCU for more Marvel content guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day or night. Peace out.